Hi guys, welcome to a review of Phoenix Wright versus Layden, or the Ace Attorney. I don't, I don't know. It's the the Professor Layden Phoenix Wright crossover game. Now I've never I'd never played Phoenix Wright before this, but I want to now because the Phoenix Wright segments were really fun. The Professor Layden segments were also really fun, although they were kind of dumbed down. Like the puzzles were not there weren't as many puzzles and they weren't quite as difficult as in the normal Layton games, but I guess, I guess that's to accommodate, like, newcomers who've never played a Layton game before, but, and, and they, they, it would have been easy for them to just do a simple cash grab type thing with this, but the story's actually really in-depth, and probably, like, in terms of Professor Layton games, anyway, my second favorite, uh, Professor Layton game story after, uh, Unwound Future, which is the bet, definitely, no doubt, the best of the Professor Layton games, and, from what I've seen on the internet, most people most people who've played them seem to agree with me. Uh, but anyway, well, I'm a sucker for plot twist, and this one has a plot twist. But I'm, I'm not I'm not even gonna discuss it. Well, okay. So basic basically, they go to, they go to the they meet Professor Layden meets this girl, and she's like looking for help because she's in danger, and she was she was previously hanging out with one of his friends, a man named Carmine Accidenti. And she, they help her, and these, like, spirits show up, and then they get whisked away into this, like, magic book, this book land called Labyrinthia, that's, like, this fictional town, I guess. And then, but then Espella, the girl, escapes, and she ends up getting caught up in this, uh, like, accidentally caught up in this, like, murder trial that, that Phoenix Wright is covering, because Phoenix Wright is an ace attorney. Uh, I don't know why I said it like that. Um, so he's, like, defending her in court. And a after he finishes defending her, he gets, like, sucked into the book, too. But for whatever reason, uh, Layden comes with all his memories of who he is. But Phoenix Wright is, like... Well, actually, this is explained in the end. But, uh, but Phoenix Wright, for, like, a good portion, like, Professor Layden meets him. And Phoenix Wright and his assistant, Maya, both think they're bakers. And they're living with this one baker lady who's uh, taking care of Espella. And the whole town is run off of this. There's a man called the Storyteller, and he he writes the story of all the people in the town. And then he throws out the pages in the big parade, and and they, like, it's like fate. Like, they're being handed their fate, and they just live by it like it's law. And there's also this, uh, this legendary witch lady, Great Witch Bazella, who's, like, once they hunt her down, all the witch trials were in. Because basically they find any witches, and then they put them on trial. And then when they get persecuted as guilty, which in this game, they're basically all guilty until proven innocent. Which makes their job all the more difficult when you're in the court. Uh, they, they, they get like put into a fire pit and killed. Uh, so, so it's kind of barbaric. It's, and they, the Phoenix Wright is like trying to bring justice and logic to it. And first he thinks he's a baker, but then he, he eventually remembers like everything. Uh, and then the story just goes crazy from there. Like there's weaving plot twist characters come back that you don't expect to see. All... What the heck was that? Jeez, what's going on? Anyway, um, there's... The story goes twist and turns. Great, great story. Uh, and then all leading up to the plot twist in the end, which I mentioned this in my Hot Fuzz review, which actually reminded me that I still needed to review this game. If you haven't watched that review, go watch it. Uh, hashtag shameless plug. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. Um, but I mentioned it in that. Uh, this plot twist is a big one. Like, if for Hot Fuzz's sake comparison, if you haven't watched that review, go watch it. Um, the plot twist in Hot Fuzz was better executed with less plot holes, but was also less big. Like, this plot twist is huge. So the fact that they managed to pull it off with as little plot holes as they had is actually pretty impressive. And I, I did, I really enjoyed... It was something that I kind of had a suspicion of throughout the game, and then it ended up being true, and it made me feel smart, because I'm like, yes, I knew it, I knew it. And it was, like, cool. But there's not as much for me to talk about without spoiling it, so I'll go into spoil. I'll, let me think, make, make sure there's nothing I can't say about it. Um, so Professor Layton is great as usual, although the puzzles are dumbed down, which is ki kind of a shame, but it, it 
same time, it's like whatever, because there were some puzzles in uh, the actual Professor Layton games that really infuriated me. And I, I feel like in a lot of the Professor Layton games, the puzzle difficulty is very unbalanced. Like, some of them are easy, and some of them are really hard. In this game, they're almost all relatively easy, although there were a couple that really, like, stumped me. Uh, but it's really good, and the court sessions are also really good. Phoenix Wright, this this game single-handedly made me want to play Phoenix Wright. I, I was actually, I was going to get the tr Ace Attorney Trilogy for 3DS while it was on sale, but I, like, missed the sale date, so I didn't get it because it was, like, expensive and I don't have a lot of money, but I... Pro I'll get it at some point because I I really liked I really liked the court se I actually enjoyed the court segments more than the puzzle segments at certain points. The court segments were really only annoying when I had like because it works on like a five strike system or if you screw up and like accuse the wrong person or present the wrong evidence uh like you get a strike taken off and you have five strikes before it's game over and then you have to go back to your last save. So that's, that kind of got annoying, is, like, when I would screw up something and, like, lose a strike, or when, when a situation came up where I had absolutely no idea what the answer was and I couldn't find it, so I was just guessing, and then, and then I would end up running out of strikes and having to, oh yeah, and when you restart from your last save, however many strikes you had when you save it, that's how many you get when you come back in. So if I had one strike when I saved it, I come back in with one strike, and it just, that, that was a, annoying. But at the same time, it's like, whatever, that's more due to me being dumb than uh, anything else. But, and, and, then, and then I would have to replay through all these sections, and like, I would run into problems where like, you ha I, have to talk, I have to press like, certain characters first before I can pr present evidence for other characters and all that kind of stuff. And it got really complicated because you're, you're like, interviewing like, several witnesses at once. The final court case actually has you interviewing like, 10 witnesses, which is just crazy crazy uh, and a lot of them were like basically useless but um and the characters are like really crazy and stuff which i think is like a staple of phoenix Wright games like just really crazy i have a lot more to say about the court cases because the the professor lane segments wasn't a lot of puzzles it was actually a lot more of a the like go to place, look around place, find, like, we, there, there were some clues that I found on the wall on, uh, like, diff different places. There was a wall clue, wall-related clue, that's why I said that, that ended up being, like, essential to the court cases. And I'm like, if I didn't find this when I was doing the Layden segment, how would I be able to pass this court segment? I, I don't know, because I'm, I, I mean, I found it, but. There must have been some way to build that in there. But anyway, it's a lot of, like, go to certain place, find clues, engage in cutscene dialogue or whatever. This this game shows Layden being a badass more than any other Professor Layden game. He fights dudes with swords in this, which, whenever people say that Professor Layden can't be in Smash, I'm just like, um, no, yes he can, because, like, they don't show it off in the games because the focus is him being a gentleman and not, like, resorting to violence and, like, instead solving puzzles and stuff but he can fight when he needs to like like he can pull out a sword and be a badass when he needs to he he, he can like fence and ride horses and stuff which is really cool i like that that he that he can be a badass but he chooses not to but he choose that he can fight but he chooses not to most of the time which is a cool little character thing and this game shows that off more than any of the other Wayne games. But that's just a random little tidbit. Uh, now I'll go into the uh, story, I guess. The plot twist is really complicated, though. Because so. they basically have to, like, explain everything that's going on in the game. All right, plot twist coming in ten seconds. Click off. I have to do this with, like, every review now. Because, <laughs> like, everything I play has, like, plot twists that I don't want to spoil. All right, let's go. So the plot twist is Labyrinthia is not a magic, magic community. That's basically it. And then the whole rest of the game after that's revealed is like the game explaining how how the illusion was given. Basically, it's really, it's really complicated. Not not to the point when I was playing the game, I never felt like it was too convoluted. But trying to explain it all in a review is way too complicated. But I'll, I'll give you the basic. Just basically. The storyteller is actually the runner of a company, 
and Brit and the Labyrinthia is a secret government project, like is a secret project supported by the government, and the people in there are all people who have signed up for the project to have their memories taken away and like be placed in this fictional setting. And the storytelling, like the parades where the storyteller papers are handed out, they're actually like giving them like this drug that like makes them forget stuff and like stay like in their fantasy world and stuff and and they're also more susceptible to like suggestion so when they when they see like the page something written down on the page like this would happen to you they're more s susceptible to believing that and then they have like they have like a group of people that uh go around and that that go around and like they call them the shades that go around and are actually responsible for all the magic activities that go on, which they, they do this by like, there's another drug. I don't know. They, they exp kind of explain all the weird stuff away with like drugs. Ba basically it's like knockout gas where they get knocked out somehow and then wake up. And while they're knocked out, they can come in and ba they basically like pause whatever's going on and can come in and do whatever they want. Cause some weird magic thing. And then, Quebec, which that that one present that's where the plot holes kind of start is right there because like you you see you've seen in the previous cutscenes where magic stuff happens and that's not how it's portrayed it's just kind of like whatever but like I said this is such a big plot twist that you can't execute a plot twist this grandiose without any uh, plot holes so it's impressive that they did and they have like machinery that like does certain stuff and it's like invisible because they have like invisible cloaking stuff and it basically just explains all the previous uh plot threads of how Carmine accidentally was actually a like he stumbled upon this town what I'm doing something okay Bye. he stumbles upon this town and like he rescues a spell up but then and and then Professor Professor Lean wasn't actually meant to be brought there. Uh, it was part of like a scheme by the uh, High Inquisitor, who is also the uh, leader of the Shades. The High Inquisitor, the one who persecutes the witches. Basically, she persecutes all the people who are accused of being witches. Then when those people get put in the fire, they're actually not put in a furnace. They're lowered down into a secret place where they're taken away on cart, and then like they, they their memories are erased, and then they become Shades and are assigned by... High Inquisitor Darklaw, a.k.a. the, uh, Great Witch, they call her, but she's not the same one as the, uh, one that's prophesied, which is kind of, like, needlessly confusing, but whatever. And they, and they go around and do all this stuff. Like, like I said, this is complicated. And then they give a backstory for why they're doing all this. It actually has to do with, they built a bell, they built a bell tower using this bell they found underground in this ruins area called the Bell of Ruin by, like, the Indians who lived there or whatever, and apparently there's some sort of, like, environmental thing there that, like, makes it so when the sound of a silver chime is heard, they, like, pass out or something. I don't remember. It's, it's been a while since I finished this game, so my memory's a little hazy. But And base, basically what happens is a Spella and her friend, who is, the, who is a young Darklaw, they go up there and they're, like, a Spella's father is the storyteller. And Darklaw's father is an alchemist man who actually died before the event, before the main events of the story. And that's, that's part of one of the core cases is how he got killed. But he actually, I believe, did he take his own life? I don't remember. I know, I feel like he was going to because like they were hiding this secret base. Basically what happens is they built this bell tower with the bell. They, they don't know that people will be passed out with ruin. There's, there's a bonfire and, like, a furnace of, like, like fire and, like, a celebration. Um, what happens is the two girls are playing up there. And to, to, keep, to keep them from ringing the bell, not, not because they knew about the thing, but because, not because, they, not because uh, the storyteller knew about... Uh, God, the storyteller knew about the curse, or not curse, but, like, the thing with the silver, like, silver ringing sounds and everybody passing out but because he, I don't remember why, but he basically, he tells his daughter this story about how the great, whoever rings the bell becomes the great witch Bazella, and that, that's what the Bazella, and uh, basically what happens is, a spell, well, a spell thinks she rang the bell, but actually it was Darklaw who rang the bell, but neither of them can remember, because they ring the bell, they pass out, 
Everyone else in the town passes out. The whole town sets on fire because of the, like, bonfire celebration they have going on. Everyone dies. Uh, the alchemist and the storyteller come back to the town, like, back, back when it was an actual town with, that they grew up in. They grew up in the town together as, like, friends. They come back, find everyone, like, dead, and they go up to the bell tower, and the two girls are, like, huddling in fear. And a spell, is, a spell uh, you find out she saw this, like, engraving in the bell tower wall that made her think that it was, a, like, a great fire dragon who did this. And it was summoned by Bazella when she rang the bell. And so they, they, they keep the secret. And they, they, they know that Darklaw did, that Darklaw rang the bell, but neither Darklaw or Espella know because they're so traumatized. And the trauma, like a spell, kind of goes crazy, gets traumatized, thinking she's the great witch, and so they have to cover it up and make it so she's not the great witch, and like make her forget. And that that's that's how that's the real reason they built this whole town, not not for research. That's what they, I mean, that's what the government believes. But the real reason they built this whole town is to like protect her. But then, then it all just kind of goes downhill, and then. But then they realize that it wasn't their fault, and they they're not upset about it anymore. And Espella doesn't think she's the Great Witch anymore because she they erased her memory. But like as it goes on, she starts to remember all this stuff about being the Great Witch. So it's actually and I through the whole, through the story, I was kind of suspecting. Huh. I wonder. I wonder if maybe the magic isn't real, and it's all like a fake town. And then Layden and Luke, his assistant, actually they're going into. They're going to meet the storyteller, and they actually find a photograph. This is later in the story, and that that was the like first big clue that like yeah maybe the magic world is not what it seemed. But yeah, like ever everyone and it's that got and I think the reason it's called the reason it's called Layton versus Wright is kind of a weird thing. Like basically, Wright it, Phoenix Wright is in the final trial where he's trying to prove that Espella isn't the Great Witch, which is difficult because she's saying that she is. And, and everyone else believes that she is. And so Layden confronts the storyteller. He's already figured out what's going on because he's super smart, but he doesn't, he doesn't like say it until at the trial. He goes into the trial, takes the position of the prosecutor so he can, uh, because basically Phoenix Wright's uncovered the fact that Dark Law is like actually the leader of the Shades or whatever, so she can't be the prosecutor anymore because she's on trial. And so Layden comes in to, so they have no prosecutor, so Layden comes in and fills the prosecutor role to finish the job, which I guess is why they call it Layden versus Phoenix Wright, but it's still, it didn't need to be called the Versus. I think they, they, I wonder, I wonder if it's even called Versus in, like, Japan, where it is originally made, because it seems like in America they just, like, if there's a crossover, it's got to be Versus or X or some, something like that. But anyway, the plot, and they reveal that there's machinery that was, like, help helping with all this crazy stuff the shades would control the machinery and that's how they would perform these magic feats which there's still a lot of them that i'm like okay how did they do this and when you like really think about it after playing the game there are, there are quite a few plot holes but there are no like big glaring obvious plot holes about this uh about this scenario just like kind of sort of doubts like really they were able to pull that off nobody ever ran into the invisible machinery and stumbled upon what was going on not, nothing like that but uh, still the plot just doesn't make and the fact that they did it in like a crossover game that could have easily been just like a cash grab with a not very deep story the fact that they did it in that game is uh impressive and it shows a lot and they they cross it over brilliantly like that they they make the two styles of gameplay mesh so well even even if they do dumb down the uh, the puzzle stuff and probably the court stuff a little bit too, and they also because like you can use the hint coins that you normally can use on puzzles in late games in the Phoenix Wright trials, which dumb them down a bit, so you can like use hints to eliminate like different options to make it easier to know what to do, so you get less strikes. Jeez, like a thumbnail that's like not whatever, but. Good game. Very good game. Um, I'd give it a 10 out of 10, but like I said, the puzzles are a little weak, and the yeah, and the story, the plot twist does have a few plot holes, so I give it a 9 out of 10. Arrivederci!